Here we are, Algebra 2, Chapter 1, Section 3 on Algebraic Expressions. And I'm pretty sure you're going to like this lesson today. So our objectives are to evaluate algebraic expressions and to simplify algebraic expressions. Um, at this point, you should all have a really good grasp on algebra. So it might frustrate you that we're not solving anything, but that's okay. So modeling words with an algebraic expression. Um, which algebraic expression models the word phrase 7 fewer than a number t? Now remember, um, when we use words in math, it's kind of hard and things get um, muddled sometimes. So it's important that we understand the words and the phrases um, to help us understand why we use mathematical phrases instead of just using um, English to talk to one another. So let's look at um, the operations we're going to do. Fewer than means to do what? Subtract. So the phrase is 7 fewer than a number t. So would it be t minus 7 or 7 minus t? That's the question. What do you think? Ready, set, go. All right. So the correct answer would be 7 fewer than a number t is t minus 7 because it's 7 fewer than t. You're taking 7 away from t. Hopefully you got that one. Okay, what about this one? Which algebraic expression models the word phrase 2 times the sum of a and b? So what are you going to be doing first? 2 times or the sum of? Obviously, times is multiply, sum is to add, so 2 times the sum of a and b is also this third option here. Don't worry, I won't have them all be that. Um, so let's take and use this to make a model. So if we're going to model a situation, first we need to identify um, what operations we're going to be using, and then we need to pick variables or values for those variables and then we need to represent those actions so these are for story problems so you start with twenty dollars and save six dollars each week what algebraic expression models the money you want to save so first I need to identify the actions that we're going to do um, so we're going to save so what are we going to do with our money are we going to get more or are we going to get less we're going to get more, obviously. And then each week means it's going to occur all the time. So that's going to be a multiplication problem. So that is our actions. What are our variables? Let's see, we start with $20. That doesn't really have a variable on it. And then we save $6 each week. So what do you say? Um, should we use S for our variable? I like it. So we'll use S for saved money each week. So then our expression would be $20, that's how much we started with, plus 6 times S. If you chose to do a different variable like W, you could use W for each week. That would be totally acceptable. Or you could just use X and say X represents the number of weeks. Whatever makes more sense to your brain is fine with me. So I want you to pause, think about this one. You had $150, but are spending $2 each day. What algebraic expression models this situation? So you start with $150. Oops. Take it back now, y'all. Okay, so you start with $150, but you are spending. By spending, does that mean you're gaining money or you're losing money? Well, obviously, you're going to lose money, and you lose $2 each day. So I'm going to say minus 2D. $150 minus $2 every day. That would model our expression so that we could assume in 10 days, if D equals 10, that means we would take 150 minus $20, which means in 10 days we would only have $130. What a sad state. OK, 
Okay, so here's a vocab word, evaluate. To evaluate an algebraic expression, you substitute a value in for the variable. Usually it will be given to you. So let's find the value of this expression. 7 times the quantity a plus 4 plus 3b minus 8 for a equals negative 4 and b equals 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and for every value of a, we're going to substitute in negative 4. And for every value of b, we're going to substitute in 5. So I have 7 times negative 4 plus 4 plus 3 times 5 minus 8. Okay, following our order of operations, what do we do first? Remember that whole PEMDAS thing? Okay, first we do what's in parentheses. So our part that's in parentheses is negative 4 plus 4, so I have 7 times 0 plus 3 times 5 minus 8. Okay, next I do multiplication and division. 7 times 0 is 0. 3 plus 5 is 15 minus 8. 0 plus 15 minus 8 equals 7. So if we evaluate this expression, our answer would be 7. So what do you think? If we were to move parentheses, do you think it would change the value? Well, if you're not sure, why don't you go ahead and pause and try moving the parentheses. Maybe let's do this. 7a plus 4 plus 3b minus 8. What if instead of around the a plus 4, we put it around the b minus 8? Go ahead and try that one. See if your values are the same. Hopefully you found that your values are not the same because by changing the parentheses we change our order of operations. Moving right along, I want you to go ahead and pause the video, try each of these, see what you come up with. All right, when I got these, I got, oh, I did it again. I keep forgetting to hit the edit mode. Okay, I got 0.75 for my first answer, and I got 18 for my second answer. If you didn't get those, go back and check over your work, see what you might have done wrong. Um, then ask your partner when you get to uh, lesson check time, if you still didn't figure out what you did. All right. Um, so these equations we're going to evaluate and see if they're always, sometimes, or never true. So for the first one, 11 plus 3x minus 7 equals 6x plus 5 minus 3x. What we want to do is we want to combine all our like terms on each side and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and I kind of like that purple color. So on this side I can combine 11 and negative 7. What is 11 minus 7? 4. So I have, oh, that's a positive. Positive 3x plus 4. Over here I can combine 6x and negative 3. I get 3x plus 5. If I ever have um, a value, let me erase that. If I ever have a value and I add 4 to it, or if I add 5 to it, is it ever going to be true? No, never. Are you sure? Me too. So this would be never true. What about this one? I'll help you out with this one too. <clears throat> Over here I can combine 7x and negative 4x. So 7 minus 4 is 3x plus 6. This one I have 12 and negative 8. Combine like terms. I have 3x plus 4. Is that ever going to be true? Again, no, it will never be true. Let's try this one. Um, we'll go ahead and distribute 3. So 
So I have 2x plus 3x minus 12 equals, and we'll distribute this 2, 4x minus 12 plus x. Let's combine our like terms. Here I have 5x minus 12, and here I have 5x minus 12. How often will that be true? Always. Good. Hope you're catching on to that. All right, this is the last problem. Uh, what we're going to do is solving a literal equation just means solving for a certain variable. So here, this is um, the equation to change from Fahrenheit to degrees in Celsius. It's just, um, so if we had a certain temperature in Fahrenheit, we could say what temperature that is in Celsius. So let's solve for F in terms of C. All that means is that what we want to do is get this F by itself. So we're going to do the opposite um, operations in order to get F by itself. So what's most closely related right now with the F? Well, since it's in parentheses, the F and the 32 are most closely related. So what we want to get rid of first is that 5 ninths. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here. F minus 32. Okay, so to get rid of a fraction, what do we have to do? Multiply its inverse to the other side. Okay, so if you multiply and you divide by 9, multiply and divide by 5, it's going to happen. They're all going to cancel. So over here I have 9 fifths C, and then I have that equals F minus 32. What do I do to get F by itself? Add 32. So F, in terms of C, is 9 fifths C plus 32. Can we combine any of those terms? No, because this 9 fifths C is all one unit. We can't add the 9 fifths and the 32 together. All right, so um, this equation is Kelvin and Celsius. Kelvin, if you didn't know, represents absolute zero. And um, theoretically, it's the temperature at which um, life would have to be in order for it to completely stop. Like, everything would stop at absolute zero. So, in terms of uh, K in terms of C, or what is, we already have K in terms of C. So, if we have C in terms of K, all that means is we're going to get C by itself. So, to get C by itself, we subtract 273. So C in terms of K is K minus 273. Okay, here's your lesson check. Go ahead and answer these four questions. Have them done and ready to work on with your partner. Thanks and have a good day.